Hey, what up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. It's the NFL playoffs. Teams are entering the home stretch. Gold and glory is in sight. And I've teamed up with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL. And right now, they have an offer. You want to know the offer? You don't want to miss it. All customers can get no sweat bet. Get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay or same game parlay X bet doesn't hit. Max reward limits apply. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up by using promo code TBC, which stands for The Breakfast Club. That's TBC. And if you're a new customer, you just bet $5 and you get $200 in bonus bets instantly. How dope is that? Wondering what you can do with that $200 on bonus bets? Combine multiple bets together for a shot at even a bigger payout. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. All new customers can use my promo code TBC. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us today. Man, legends, trendsetters. We got Brandon Marshall. He's been up here numerous times. Yep. And we you got did. the brother Cam Newton. Welcome, brother. You yeah. did. How you feeling? Man, nothing short of amazing. If I was any better, I'd be a twin. <laughs> hey, yeah. Man, it's so good to see what y'all are doing. You know, Brandon, you know, you were early on with the podcasting with I Am Athlete. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cam, you don't like to call it a podcast. You like to say you got a show. It's a show, bro. A show. With, with, with Funky, with Funky Fridays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How has the transition been from football to media personality? Yeah, from athlete to personality. Cool. So uh, my transition was smooth. And I I mean, Cam's one of those guys as well. You know, in the peak of our career, we already started doing what we are doing now. Like, my thing was I wanted my post-career to already be solidified you know, in a way. Mm-hmm. So I spent an entire off season in 2014 at Harvard building out a case study on uh, uh, transition. Mm-hmm. And what came out of that was content and commerce. And so I've been on that path, like just trying, you know, succeeding, failing, doing some big stuff, mm-hmm. you know, some dumb stuff. So like my transition was smooth. Like I started my transition literally when I was having my Pro Bowl days. Mm-hmm. You know, that's 2014. So I always tell younger dudes, like, you look, Keep the main thing the main thing for the first couple of years. And then once you solidify in, in ball, then you start shadowing people. Then you start reading those books. And then you start it before you leave because when you leave, they don't care. Mm-hmm. They don't give a damn. They, they If I ain't had a media, they don't care about no, no Brandon that's, Marshall. That, that's changed, though. <clears throat> that's changed. Like, you, I mean, what I mean by that is when you say, like, keep the main thing the main thing. Like you got athletes that's in their prime that's still keeping media at its forefront. Mm -hmm. And I said it earlier, it's like gone are the days where we needed major networks to to get our narrative out Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. doing it in a way that I've I've vowed and, and, and really took a oath like, I wanna be a voice of my people, my kind. Mm -hmm. And that's bigger than just race. Like, if you feel how I feel, I'm, you're my kind. If you can relate to what I relate to, you're my kind. Mm-hmm. And, you know, having this platform to be able to, you know, really call bullshit on on certain things, but also empower on the other side, too, all the while being entertaining. Wow. And my fear was going on a major network and being muzzled. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, bro, like, that ain't me, though. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I, I, like I know I want to appease to the people in in Bankhead just the same as the people in Buckhead. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like I, you, you can't try to remove that because that's a part of me. So I think now in in, in media we're in the golden age of athlete generated content, mm-hmm. and it's something that's it's healthy. Now we can call bullshit on a lot of people that's just saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. What gives you the right to make that? And I can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, you feel this type of way about certain things, but I really did it, though. I know how Dak Prescott feels. I know how, you know, Lamar Jackson feels. I went to the Super Bowl. I went, I was a Pro Bowl player. I was Mm -hmm. an All-Pro. But what, you got a journalism degree? Mm. So when you you hold their feet to the fire and say, like, no, bro, whether you agree with what I'm saying or not, Mine should be more justified because I actually have live reps in, in battle. Lived experience. Come on. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, how, how do you feel when you when you hear, especially <clears throat> when you see, when you look at all, all the places that you name that talk about football or talk about sports, and a lot of these people never played the sport, right? Yeah. 
Most of you brothers been doing this since three years old, right? Over and over again. I got two sons, so I mm-hmm. know what the commitment is. I, even though I don't play, yeah. I know it's six days a week, game. You know, five days a week, game. So when you hear these brothers talk about what you should have done or how the no, play should have no, went. No, no, mm-hmm. no, no, your shit. No, your shit. And I got into it with a journalist on my platform. And, then, you know, I'm like, damn, we built this to protect the athlete and to be a safe space, but also hold them accountable. But it's like we go out there and we say, well, Dak Prescott just threw his third interception. OK, well, tell me about whose fault those interceptions were. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. The, the, the receiver ran a, a five yard hitch route, but he was really supposed to run this. So Dak is dropping back, holding the safety down the middle and then throwing the ball off a trust. Memory. And yeah. the receiver didn't do his job. But we out there on TV. And we just saying stuff just to make up stuff and, and do numbers. And my problem is with the players, though. The players that ain't that's being lazy. Like, bro, you sat in them seats and you know. You can't go out there and say, give this hard take. You got to be able to say, look, I don't know their assignment. I don't know if there was the receiver or the quarterback. But if it was the quarterback, this is what should have happened. We just out there just saying stuff just to say stuff sometimes. I've never seen you bite your tongue on inside the NFL, though, Brandon. Well, I mean, I feel like that's why I'm always in trouble is because <laughs> we talking about like, because it's like, you know what I'm saying? You think about, and I never forget this when I got to Inside the NFL on Showtime, did that for 10 years. And I'm like, I heard a, I heard a producer say like, define your seat. Like, what's your seat? I'm like, my seat. And I was like, oh, once I understood it, I was like, oh, my seat is to get a player's perspective and I'm mm-hmm. always going to do that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to go out there and say this receiver suck. I'm going to say, well... From my perspective as a receiver, da 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 da. So, Cam, did you ever get those opportunities to be on those major sports networks, or you just said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do my own thing"? <laughs> uh, I challenged my uh, agent, Carlos Fleming, at WME when I was a rookie, prior to me coming into the league, and I told him I never want to be a sports analyst. Mm. And it's your job to make sure that I have enough opportunity when I leave the game of football that I can do whatever I want to do. Why? Why? Didn't you? Yeah. Because I knew I, I didn't want to. Like I said, I didn't want to be muzzled. I've always stood on how I felt, you know. But every time I say something, people get distracted off of, why he dressed like that, though? Mm-hmm. But why he talked like that? I'm not going to lie. Everybody in this room was like, what is Cam going to wear to the breakfast club today? Yeah. That, everybody was thinking that before you For came sure. in. But they, they get personal, but they miss the, the point that I made. You know what I'm saying? I should be clean clapping. to me though. I, I I'm not yeah. a dresser, but when I be, I be like, Cam look like he got his own style going yeah. on. Yeah, I just see no, it's, it's fly. No, uh, but I, but this is the thing though. Like I never wanted to look like any other body, like nobody. I never wanted to look like y'all niggas. Like mm-hmm. respectfully though, like I'm not the dude that's gonna stand out or or stand in a line for a, a shoe release. But there's no disrespect to the people who do. I'm never gonna be the person where he's like, oh, that's the new collection from. Blah, say blah. Right. I'm not that. You know, it was just like, bro, first off, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And uh, I pay attention to the details. So the the pocket squares, the lapel pins, the socks, the watch, the rings, the, you know. Top hat. You got to come out with a lot of top hats. And glad I do. <clears throat> it's Mashika hats right okay. now based in Bozeman, Montana, as well as uh, Venice Beach, still California. Still waiting on mine. Oh. You still, still waiting on mine. You still ain't seen me your size, bro. Stop. Where can people get these? <laughs> <laughs> no, come, come on. on. Listen, come on. Don't Cam, do that. come on. Don't I am that. at, I swear. <laughs> True story. Every time you talk about your brand, bro, I'm like, damn, I still ain't get my hat. He came on, I'm athlete. Bro, y'all measured my hat, my head. Mm-hmm. And you say you're going to send it out. This is when you first dropped the line. So you see what you're doing right now? You're holding me accountable. And Cam Newton in media right now, that's all I want to do is hold everybody right. No, I ain't holding nobody right. accountable. You missed the play. No, you said you I'm talking about your hat. brand. We get more airtime about the, the brand. Cam about the caps, Brandon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. We talking about the hat. <laughs> that's, I'm trying to see how many sales we get off the hat. You yeah, feel yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mashika, Mashika has M-E-S-H-I-K-A hats. <laughs> no. And then... You know, we can make it do what it do. Can, can, can I can I ask a question? I know this is Absolutely. Breakfast Club and mm-hmm. this y'all show. How y'all doing? Right, less like, black and highly favored. I felt like that. Talk like, damn, did we ask the brothers how they was we doing? We did. We did. Yeah, we, we did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we yeah, started but, asking how they but was no, doing. this is a real. And we, you know, I don't, this is this is. Mm-hmm. I don't know what y'all want to do with it, but how you doing? I'm doing well. You doing good? I'm doing right well. because you know, as athletes and also media, we know, you know. Not everybody know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we won't have those type of conversations. So I just wanted to ask you how you was doing. Now I'm Good. doing I'm doing well. And, and, the, and the thing that makes me do so well is family. The first thing you said to me when I walked in here was, how's our boy doing? Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to do more. Now, mm-hmm. of course, it's not your boy, but 
it's our boy. It's like mm-hmm. a village raised him. If you don't know, I sent my son out to, to your facility out there and they trained for a day or whatever it may be. But that's what we need to do more of to make sure mm-hmm. we checking up on each other. And I, and I appreciate that. But my family makes me feel so mm-hmm. well. Everything that's else right. on the outside is noise. That's right. When I come home and I got the love of them six kids, the love of my wife. And, and when matters. you go through things, you appreciate that more. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and the reason why I open it up, because y'all y'all are the pioneers. Y'all y'all lead, y'all lead, built the blueprints and the templates for us to follow. Mm-hmm. And we follow and we watching it. And so even like this open seat, you know, and, and, and that type of talk, it's like, you know, y'all, it's like it's a lot to it. And you got to stay strong. You got to always stay positive. So that's why I wanted to ask how y'all doing. Thank you, brother. But if we return the favor, how you guys doing? I mean, both of you brothers are going through a lot good good, and, and I'm possibly negative. You have a, another child on the way. Congratulations. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the new show. I seen you clapping back at a, a journalist that I, I guess he gave you like a backhand compliment. And you was yeah. like, my nigga, don't give me a backhand yeah, compliment. don't com- do that. Yeah. But, but now, now this media revolution mm-hmm. has given me the, the, the volume to speak on that. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times we always talk, but our volume was not as high as it is today. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think, and it was just like, I heard what he said and I was like, no, 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 no. It puts respect me, on your name. I love that he rewinded it and everything. I said, oh, this is. Let me tell you what you're not gonna do though. You know, cause a lot of people they just judge you off of the NFL. But I, bro, I'm five star athlete out of high school, ch- national championship in college. But when you talk about that, that's that's cocky. Like, hold on, bro. Like, no, don't don't talk about that. It's like, bro, I got all that to tell you what I've done. But all you got to tell me is, I've been covering this sport for how many? Like, bro, I've been playing this sport for that many years too. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So, so you go back and get that degree, like, but you can't go. I, oh, I got football. my degree too. Yeah. Well, so what are you talking about? So everything mm-hmm. that you got, I got too. Mm-hmm. And But you're gonna you're gonna suppress what I my take on certain things and you're gonna try to change the goalpost to say, you're trying to make it a, a Dak and Cam thing. Mm-hmm. This is not Dak, I'm a big fan of Dak, just like so many other people are. It's a me and you, Jason, issue here. It's like, bro, I'm in your I'm in your field now. That is about to be mine. Cause I can do what you do, but you could never mm-hmm. do what I do. But when you take that tone and sentiment, he's bitter. He's angry. And we gotta stop that. I've seen what this guy was able to do for so many years mm-hmm. and just hold people accountable. Just ask the question. Mm-hmm. Simple. Mm-hmm. Hold up. Was it really like that though? Hold up. What like hold up. Whether how petty somebody would make it believe or what, what not, it's still accountability and you're gonna have to speak on it. And that's what I appreciate most about the Breakfast Club because we knew you were gonna be held accountable. Mm-hmm. And we knew somebody was gonna ask the question mm-hmm. that we all wanted to know. Mm-hmm. So when I do Funky Friday, when I do Fourth and One, I'm not just speaking from a fan's perspective or the viewer's perspective. I'm really asking because I owe a, a service to my audience. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And once you understand that, that's me studying. That's me being a student of the game. That's me understanding like, yo, how does Breakfast Club stay on air and relevant air for so many years? God. Yeah, God. You see what I'm saying? God. <laughs> like, we're talking. We're up. I, I, yeah, there's, I don't think there's any other explanation for mm-hmm. it because a lot of times platforms like this would have been. For like, sure. Been gotten out the way. Yep. Been pushed out the way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you, but how do y'all feel like what y'all are doing is disrupt? How do y'all feel uh, it's disrupting what's happening in traditional sports networks? Because I feel like I watch it and I'm like, the language is changing. The way yeah. a lot of these people are trying to talk on these platforms yeah. is changing. And I know it's because of what athlete driven podcasts are doing. Uh, sure. It's a huge opportunity for us. And, and I, this is internal language. And I always say it's next gen ESPN. Mm-hmm. And so next generation ESPN. It's just not a safe spot. Like e- even what Cam was just saying about Breakfast Club, it's like it's how you ask the question That's and right. how you hold your, your, your people accountable. And so we mm-hmm. do the same thing. I did it with Cam. Right, like Cam playing for the Patriots. This is one of our first epic uh, uh, episodes. We got millions of views, and he coming off, and there's he, you know, you're throwing shoulder. the ball in the dirt a little bit. It's okay, bro. Okay, and so, but he's dealing with a shoulder <laughs> in injury. <laughs> Make the point. You know, everybody okay. thought y'all had beef when y'all did the conversation. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. but no, it was the tough one. And I was like, damn, I gotta ask the question. Is like, 
are you done? And I'm like, bro, how's your shoulder feeling, bro? Because, you know, you, you and he went into it and he explained himself. Mm -hmm. And then he had a legendary moment. He said, there ain't 32 better than me. Mm -hmm. Man, we sold T-shirts off of that, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was how it's how you ask the question. So it's a safe space. And there's a lot of people built in podcasts, but are you built in platform? Platform is like building teams. You have to have a monetization strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a huge opportunity for those out there that want to figure that out in sports. Y'all Cam played 11 seasons, right? Yes, sir. Brandon, you played 13. That's 13. a lifetime in the mm -hmm. NFL. Do y'all feel like y'all were fulfilled? Hell yeah. Okay. But this is the thing that I would ask <clears throat> as sports fans. Mm -hmm. What's more important? Envy. Is it championships or impact? Ooh. For me? Yeah. My favorite NBA player is Allen Iverson, so I would say impact. Mm. Never won a ring. Come on now. It's my favorite player though. I, I think I think you have to have a healthy combination of both. I no, no, I, no. I, I don't I don't I don't think it's a, no, I don't no. think it's an either or. No, no, this is an either or. You, you cause, have cause, to. You have to. I can't let you straddle. Okay, okay. <laughs> when, 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 when you're thinking hey, yo. about hey, yo. Hey, your yo. favorite athletes, <laughs> yes, right. Or if you were an athlete, mm -hmm. what would you be more keen to saying? When it's all said and done, I want to have more championships, or I want to be able to sit on my impact was felt. In neither, well, neither. Hold on, bro. Neither. I, I, I have to say it's a combination of two. And the reason I have to say it's a combination of two because the championships will keep you out of the GOAT conversations often. Like people, as, as great as Allen Iverson is, shifted culture, one of the best to ever do it, he's not mentioned in that rare era of the Michael Jordans, the Magic Johnsons, okay. the LeBron this is, this James. Is, this is what I'll say to that. Mm -hmm. There are so many different determinant factors in sports, you know, Big shot without Robert Ory hitting certain certain shots. Does Kobe have as many? You know what I'm saying? Steve Kerr, like Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Those guys did their job so that we can acknowledge Michael Jordan to be. The but they greatest. don't even get in those positions without the Michael Jordans and the Kobe. That's understandable. But if does if Adam Vinatieri misses one of those field goals, do we really acknowledge Tom Brady as the goat? We would, we would never know. Yeah. But, but, I'm, but I'm saying a lot of those things went right for us to be able to say championships is key. Now, what you can't deny is impact. Impact is more self-worthy uh, statistics that's like, yo, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I see what, like Tom Brady changed the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, Peyton changed the game. Allen Iverson, cha LeBron changed. Kobe, cha mm -hmm. Michael Jordan changed the game. But that's still not to say like with with my situation, I never won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I was in the game. If certain determining factors happen, will we? Like if we had a pick six, mm -hmm. nothing that I did, but something that the defense did, mm -hmm. that gives me my championship. Is it fair to compare the NBA and NFL though? Because I feel the NFL degree it's of difficulty sports. is different. It's still sports. The really? who degree of difficulty? I feel, I feel like the NFL degree of difficulty is is different. Is it harder? I think it's harder. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think it's harder than than, than the NBA. And cuz cuz like with Barry Sanders, right? We know Barry Sanders is an all-time great <laughs> running back. Probably mm -hmm. top 3, top 4, but we don't even worry about rings when it comes to For sure. Barry Sanders. So I, I don't know if the NFL and I think when I think about the NFL, I don't know if I think about the championships as much. Mm, yeah. But even you put mm -hmm. Barry Sanders on the St. Louis Rams at the time when they had, you know, Marshall Fall. Greatest show on turf. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we may not, he may not have had the ball as yeah. much, mm -hmm. but his impact is still felt, but he's around or surrounded by a different type of team. And know? I'm not sure if one player impacts an NFL team as much as one player impacts an NBA team. Well, the, you're, you're right what you're saying, but there is a position that's the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ain't got the guy, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard on everybody. Nah. It's it's you. You don't think the quarterback, the quarterback position to me is the most important position. The quarterback position in, in football, all the sports. The quarterback, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quarterback position in football is the mega star in basketball, and and that position can be the center, guard, forward, or whatever. Uh, but that impact is still felt. Anywhere LeBron goes, he can go to the Detroit Pistons, and that's going to garner a lot of 
people to say, okay, I want to go to Detroit. Mm -hmm. That's a game changer. See what I'm saying? Like what Aaron Rodgers was able to do for New York Jets fans this year, the pre the preseason was excited. It was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, it was a wave in, in Jersey that, or, or in New, New York, York that yeah. we never really felt before, you know, since the Joe Namath or or let me mm -hmm. let me let me take that back. Uh the Rex Ryan era when when they were winning, right? Brandon's like, I used the, to play for the Jets now. Watch your mouth now. That's you know, the era. You the, missed the, the era. Missed <laughs> the era. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but that the hype, that's right. that's pretty much what I'm saying. So, you know, when you got guys that have that star power, mm -hmm. usually in football it's the, it is the quarterback. Who's the guy? Mm -hmm. You know, you try to draft him you 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 typically can't go and trade for a quarterback unless you're giving up the kitchen sink, uh, but that's just the 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 nature of of really the sport. Now it's such an interesting conversation because even I think about somebody like Peyton Manning, right? Did he really have an impact on those rings? He won with the Broncos. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what he was able to what, what was it? Uh, 2013 or 14. When he had Bebe, rest in rest in peace, um, and those statistics. See, I think he threw for like fifty two touchdowns mm -hmm. in that one season. Call it whatever you want, and the the footballs never had a spiral, but they was getting to the destination, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. with the tracker on it. You mm -hmm, dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He couldn't hand it off better than it, you know. In that spectrum, but yes, you know he was he was as an elite as we've ever seen. So much elite that even with me acknowledging or describing game changers, there's game changers in media, mm -hmm. right? Game changer, game changer. Mm -hmm. This show is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you have networks to say you are the compared target. Hey, I don't know what we got to do, but we got to go get us another breakfast club. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know what we got to do, but we got to go draft us another mm -hmm. uh, Peyton Manning. I don't know what we, we got to find us another LeBron James. Even got, if somebody says this, this show is better than the breakfast club, you still the bar. It's <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. A changer, a game changer in That's any good. commodity is the standard or the bar. Mm -hmm. And when, when you're compared to certain things, it's not to say that your show still isn't good. There's mm -hmm. shows out there that's still good, but they ain't the bar. Mm -hmm. It may be some things that they do good, but it's still not like, okay, let's see how long can you do this for? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. is this just a run? You know, just like artists, like mm -hmm. artists come out with a good album. Mm -hmm. It's like, woo, mm -hmm. that was flames. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they drop a second and third and it's like, hold on, but was it flames? Those game changers as, as as musical artists is like, okay, banger after banger. He had a couple s slip and slide songs, but you know, other than that, these were the ones. So it doesn't matter what the commodity is, my point is, they're still game changers in that. You were definitely a game changer. Did, did, you, did your career feel incomplete without a Super Bowl? No. Okay. That's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And you could never say that while playing. Mm -hmm. And that's not, and that's what we have the capabilities of doing now. It's like, you know how so many people, you know, have runs or they are dominant players, you know, and they don't have rings or will never be in a position to have a ring. Mm -hmm. like Brandon Marshall never went to the playoffs. But you don't necessarily know that. You know him as the dominant football player. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, it's like, well, while he's playing, he could never say like, man, I got to do my best to, to either be an all pro or a pro bowl mm -hmm. because my team is not good enough for us to be in the Super Bowl. You, you got fans you got to worry about, mm -hmm. the deals you got to worry about, the coaches, the continuity mm -hmm. you got to worry about. But it's, it's, it's real information. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like this seat. Like we got to find somebody that's going to hold their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we just can't bring out no no – regular person like mm -hmm. I need somebody to challenge the greatness of me I need somebody to challenge mm -hmm. the great and it gotta it gotta mesh right mm -hmm. and if we're able to go viral if we're able to still do numbers and I really ain't got my shit off yet ooh, mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about it you bringing out the best in me so next show I got you let me ask you a question you know both of you guys retired what is your thoughts I have on not retired you have not retired no sir oh, you, you just said you, you just said you want to play for the Falcons yeah, yeah. I you, haven't, but to your point. I just now, to, so, so you do want to play football again? 
Uh, if the right opportunity. The Falcons. You said that's the only team. I saw that a couple yeah, of days ago. makes sense. I got kids, bro. Like, would you take another job outside of New York? Probably not outside of New York. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, I got soon to be eight kids. Mm-hmm. Take pride in that. I love that. Yeah. Love being a dad. Can't wait to go home today to be able to take my uh, daughter to tennis practice. Best feeling ever. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not dad too. Like you everybody knows, like, oh, okay, who, yep. we don't gotta guess who his son is. Like, yeah! That's God me. damn it, Chosen! That's, that's, that's me. my boy! That's me. You know, that's, that's, me. I'm there. that's me. And I'm on his ass when we when we working out. Yep. He's eight. You know what I'm saying? My son, China, like Jaden. He's like, he's getting uh uh accepted in schools. Yeah, motherfucker. Hey. Same way, Friday. Come on. Yeah. Same like, way. not just the UGAs or the Kentuckys. It, this is the FAMUs and the Howards and the Hamptons. That's right. And I'm excited for all both of them, you know, for, for, for them all. Mm-hmm. So that's where you got to start taking into consideration. It's like, bro, I can't go to play in Seattle. Great team, great organization, but I can't do that. I mean, it's a time difference. Mm-hmm. You know, my kids got, you know, technical devices that they want to mm-hmm. call you. Mm-hmm. And, Daddy, where you at? That's right. So they need a coach, too. So... Uh, what coach would you want to play for in Atlanta? Man, ask your question, man. <laughs> hey, I'm going to ask, ask <laughs> We see it. If Belichick hey, gets the job, is he calling you, Ken? If Belichick gets the job, is he calling you? Look, I said what I said. <laughs> All right. If you want to, if you, if you still want to, you know, see what I have to say about this particular topic, mm-hmm. tune in to 4th and 1 next week. There you go. Perfect. We're going to definitely talk about it. I was you asking, still have an oh, Hold on, hold on. Oh, go, go. I was asking about Football being, we've seen the transition of football, how it's changed, right? Yeah. Uh, and to myself, who's not a player, who hasn't played, seems like it got softer, right? Mm. It seems like I've never seen quarterbacks flop until recently where a quarterback will fall on the floor, kickers mm. will fall on the floor because they want the extra yards. I've never seen shit like that before mm, in my yeah. life. But you're seeing that more. You're seeing it more in the NBA. Yeah. What is your both of your positions on the N, on the NFL, and do you think it's getting a lot of softer? Do you think it's ruining the game? Do you think it's helping in the game because it's protecting players? Uh, What's your thoughts? I'm gonna get there, but that was a vet move right there, because he was about to just throw a grenade and just wait for that sound bite to happen. It's coming by, back by just saying. But do you really got it in you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just sit back. But that's a vet move. That's physically, right. you gotta learn that. But you physically, can, you it, look like. But I'm talking about mentally and emotionally. Do you still want to go out there and do that? That grind. I I could. Mm-hmm. And I we, we were just having this conversation. Mm-hmm. What I miss most about being in the NFL is the routine. Those 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 the continuity, mm-hmm. you know, things where you know you just shooting the shit in the locker room. Bro, y'all seen your boy B. Marsh, bro. Look at this outfit that he got on. Look mm-hmm. at this food. Like he got caught last night. You know, like these things is 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 still locker room talk, safe space, and it's it's still accountability. But to the point, Envy is, I think it's not soft, it's safe. And when you think about it from the shield, when you think about it from these, you know, NBA the people who are making the decisions. The game is better with the Patrick Mahomes in it. The game is better with Lamar Jackson in it. Mm -hmm. The game is better with Odell in it. If they're hurt or if Odell retires and he then says CTE, I'm having withdrawals and I can't walk straight, my back, that's not a good look for these major conglomerate businesses that they are forced and if they are smart to be able to say, hold on, hold on, we're going to make this game safer. Call it soft. We're, we're making it safer. We need the longevity of our players while they're playing and after they're playing. And that's really what it is. Last night we was with uh, the commissioner, Roger Goodell, and we spent about an hour with him just talking about some some of these things, very casual. And one thing he did, he lit up. He was like, oh, the game is so good right now. Oh, uh, yeah, like, he did. Yeah, he mm-hmm. lit up on that. And, and we start talking about that and – you know, from his perspective, it is safer, mm-hmm. but also the business is booming. Mm-hmm. You know, it will always boom. Mm-hmm. And, and and I always push back on players uh, to talk about, you know, how soft it is because it's like, yo, all that tough guy stuff is irrelevant when you're 60 and you're dealing with the things that Cam just described. Like, I'm mm-hmm. tired of seeing some of my boys 40 years old. And they can barely walk up the steps. Hip replacements. Right? It's like protect yeah. each other out there. Like, let's go get our money. Let's compete at a high level. And I was a guy I came through the era, too, where 
we was really getting after it. You know, Ray Lewis taking, trying to take my head off, mm-hmm. and the Ed Reeds and the Troy Polamalu's of the world. Monsters. And, mm-hmm. and, but, you know, I'm like, no, nah, it makes sense. You know, and I changed my game halfway through where the first couple of years I would crack back. Remember the crack back block? Yeah. Oh, I'm taking Illegal dude's now. head off. Mm-hmm. The cleat him hit feet above Ooh. his heads, all of that. Yep. <laughs> and then I was in a game plan against Buffalo, running down on kickoff, and one of my homies hit uh, a tight end, Everett. But you used to play for the U.M. And now he paralyzed, can't mm. walk. And after that, I would just, like, stop that. What I would do is I would come back on a crack block, and I would see, like, say Ray Lewis. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ray Lewis turn around, like, let's start it up. Boom. All right, I did my job. You did your job. Right? And we good. We go home. Yeah, that's dope. That's y'all looking out for each other. Yeah. Not everybody dope. do it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you we had, I don't remember who we had up here, but he said it was uh, more difficult because now he has to think before he hits. Like, I can't hit the quarterback here. And, yeah. and it makes him... Instead of just naturally tackling or naturally doing something, I think you know, it was thinks in some way. Who was it? I think it was Malcolm Jenkins. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It was Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. yeah. He said, you "Now I have to overthink before I make the play, and sometimes that makes me miss the play." That's right. It, it, listen, and, and I always, I'm on the other side of the bomb wide receiver, but mm-hmm. the defensive guys, they're in a tough spot, and, and and so like when I'm when I get an opportunity to be a part of like these discussions and talk about the rule changes and what's next and listen to what the NFL is talking about. I'm always saying, like, but take care of our guys, too, because it ain't fair to them. They come in, and they can't hit high. They can't hit low. They hit in the wrong place, and now they find 50000 mm-hmm. That That's ridiculous. So it is tough for the defensive backs. I, I guess, Cam, a better question I would ask you, you know, uh, it's in you, but what's the motivation other than money? What? Mm. And is money the motivation? Sure. Mm. That's it. I mean, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm good. And that's what that's what they can't stand to stand uh, mm-hmm. to to know. Like there's gonna be some. I was reading the comments and uh, somebody said, "Bro, Cam Newton acting like he he's good enough to demand where he's gonna go." That was gonna be my next question. Like like what what do you say to people who yeah. say who who the hell does Cam think he is to act like he has choices? That's cool. With who he plays for, but hey, dumbass, whoever talked about it, you know, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Whether I go back to the league or not, I can say I use the game of football. For my good, because I have not played in three years, but my name is still relevant mm. because of media. Checkmate, mm-hmm. gotcha, mm-hmm. and that's all it is. And you're going to keep hearing mm-hmm. me because now I've identified the power of influence. I've understand mm-hmm. the power of entertainment. I've understood the power of just like yo, I want to see what he has to say, and while doing that. I've been able to create Iconic Saga, my production company. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was telling telling Marsh, like, I, I had an opportunity where somebody tried to sign, you know, me as a talent. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, I'm a couple million away from being your number one competitor. Because I don't need the money. My company is not funded by Cam Newton's personal money. It's his own entity Mm -hmm. you know when you look at those checks it says iconic saga it doesn't say cam newton you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so that is something where i'm trying to sustain or have a solid foundation and knowing that with the with the proper deals that comes in i'm not paying my i'm not i'm not putting my uh car or buying a car for your car show you know what i'm saying it's like i already had that football gave me that but also football is also giving me the capital to invest in the things that i care about Mm -hmm. And knowing that what I made in the NFL is not going to be enough for my lifetime. Now it's time for me to get smart enough to to throw a grenade out there and say, yeah, I'll play for Atlanta. Really saying to myself, like, <laughs> gotcha. Y'all keeping me relevant still, you know what I'm saying? And, and just doing it. Have teams reached out to you to play, though? Yes, but it wasn't, it wasn't worth talking about. It's like, what are we, what? Coming for what? No. Mm-mm. I already felt a certain type of way with going back to New England, seeing myself, seeing Newton on another color jersey. Sounded, it felt weird. Like I was, I was prepared. This is what people don't understand. I was prepared to retire when I first got cut. Wow! Just because you didn't want to leave Carolina. I, I, I never did, and that's why I hurt so much. It was like I wanted to end my career, similar to the Eli Mannings, the Ben Roethlisberger. They had that right to do. You know, and even for Tom Brady, like he could say, like, no, 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 let, let's, let's, hey, let's come together. 
you don't want me here, I don't, you know, the circumstances, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. Let's do it honorable. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. like at Matthew Stafford. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that option. Mm -hmm. They just said, yo, bro, like, and, and to them, they may say nobody wanted you. That's, that's fine it's still too. But I'm alert to understand, like I was in a good position then, and then going back to get that, and then going back to get that again. It was like, oh, okay, shit. You know, you know, I always wonder why did it seem like you know you, you led the Panthers to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. and that year, you led the Panthers to the Super Bowl. Man, you, you were by far the blackest quarterback I ever seen. Like hey. the dabbing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like the yeah. dabbing, you know, future Jeezy at games. Yeah. The white people was complaining. Yeah. The next year, you came back a little bit more subdued. Yeah. What What mm. was the reason? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't necessarily say subdued, you know, but there were, it was just more commercials. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, they, yeah. They, they put that mainstream on me and mm -hmm. then, you know, certain situations happened and I still was reminded I'm still a nigga. So you turned it down a little bit on purpose. I mean, it was kind of- It, it wasn't was, that I was turned it down. It, yeah, just, yeah. it just happened that way. Yeah. You know, I lost a deal because, you know, there was things in the media about my personal life. Everybody goes through it. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you have a breakup, I lost a deal like that. And the next week, they got another black quarterback, Dak Prescott. Wow. wow. You know, and I'm like, yo, but it, it it didn't match their aesthetic, and they have the power to do that. Now, if you do the fine print, they send you a whole contract that's they're basically saying we're going to pay you. $1.5 million and they're gonna explain all the things in this 50 page contract. And it's just like, no, nah, just get me to the last one. Okay, I'll sign it, cool, boom. But that contract really is an at will basis. Mm -hmm. You do anything that we don't damn agree with, psh, we can snip you psh, and, mm -hmm. and replace you. And once I started understanding that, it was like, yo, how am I impacting my community though? How am I, like, how do I give my son hope to be able to say, son, if that's how you feel, stand on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there ain't, it ain't no disrespect to the buckheads, but it's like everybody knows what I mean. Like I want to appease to the bankhead, mm -hmm. up. not the buckhead. Mm -hmm. Because I do more by that because everywhere that I go, question last night, bro, they really love you in Charlotte? Like, I, Charlotte, I can go anywhere. Hell yeah. It's a respect thing, because when I see a black person or I see a person of my kind and they say what's up to me, yo, one finger, one pinky, one thumb, one love. Yeah, bro, I love, what's good with it? How y'all doing, man, y'all good, y'all straight? I, I'm, I'm used to those type of toxic mm -hmm. atmospheres and I thrive in those where we shooting dice, playing poker, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or just at the bar, it's like, bro, I'm good. But no, we straight, it's a respect thing. My man, you good? You got an issue? Hey, come on, hey, around on me, let's mm -hmm. go. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when you have that awareness, or they call it emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. that's something that, that's what the that's what our our environment teaches us. They call it street smart, but mm -hmm. it, it's incorporated, it's emotional intelligence. When y'all when get to that height, mm -hmm. both of y'all, you know, y'all been, been to the, the top of, of the NFL, do you feel a pressure to keep it, to keep it ultra black? Cause, Cause there was times when, when they used to get mad at your dabbing cam, you dabbed more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but not only that though, like I look at the league now and I'm like, damn, I would get fined for certain things that they do now. This man is the creation of my cause, my cleats. Mm -hmm. But the NFL ain't never wrote him a check for that. They wow. gonna re, wow. they gonna repurpose it in a wow. different way. Wow. But he got fined for wearing the lime green mental health, mental health wow. awareness. And, wow. and I got proof. There's mm -hmm. multiple people that told me that. And the NFL is making billions of dollars mm -hmm. off of that My Cause, My Cleats. They have unbelievable testimonials by My Cause, My Cleats. But the person who was fined for that, he didn't even get reimbursed for his fines. He was just like, oh, and by the way, listen, like our forefathers. It. Yeah. How did know, that make you feel, Brandon? Like, um, Well, first, I, I think like to answer your question, you, you know, people would look at me be like, you crazy, he wow, he this and that. And it's not that, it's really disruption. And it's like, you know, everybody say, stand on business. And it's like, I always felt like I'm going I'm to go with my gut. And so my cause, my cleat, that was that. It was like, this doesn't make sense to me. I'm wearing lime green cleats. 
I'm playing on Thursday night football against the Jets, playing in Chicago against the Giants in Chicago, and we're probably going to reach a half a billion homes. And we did. Mm-hmm. And after that, I probably that was one of the reasons why I got traded to the Jets. But think about it. Now I'm a That's bad crazy. teammate. Mm-hmm. You know, I do my selfish. own thing. I'm That's selfish, crazy. et cetera, et cetera. But I'm walking back with the owner, the McCaskies, and he's like, yeah, the way you wore your socks and those line green cleats, you can never do that again. Did they even I, ask you what it was for? No, they knew because it was Mental Health Awareness Week. Got you, got so you, got you. all week we was doing everything. We had all the buildings lit up in Chicago, New York, Lime Green, and we was doing events. And I was saying, like, I'm wearing these Lime Green cleats, and I, they're probably going to find me, and I'm going to match the fine, and we'll put it whatever. And so the day, the day of the game, uh, NFL official walks up, knocks on the door. We stand at the Hilton down on uh, Michigan Ave, and they're like, yeah, if you wear those cleats, uh, we're not going to allow you to go on the field. What? And Damn. I said, well, y'all tell the fans why y'all y'all why I'm not playing today. And I shut my door, right? And then everybody, owners, everybody hitting me up. And I sat in my room. I said, I'm, I'm going through my regular routine. So anyways, I wore the lime green cleats, um, and it took off. And, and then after that, I would fly to New York, and I would meet with them. And then this is the commissioner. You know, I, I, I'm friendly with the commissioner. It's my guy. And one day we sitting in a circle. He's like, I'm tired of this kid coming in here talking about this and that and nothing's happening. Get it done. And he walked out. And then, boom, I caused my cleats. So, With um, no credit to you. No credit no or credit nothing wise. to show so, for it. So, outside of an attaboy. <laughs> outside so, of a fine. <laughs> this is what I would say. But also, too, I got another situation, too. Well, well, no, I don't want to say that because I don't, don't want to say on, that. No, because I don't want to leave that out there like you. that. No. Give, me, give, me, give me two sentences. Okay. D'Angelo Williams was the cure for cancer. His mm-hmm. mom... Rest in rest in, rest in peace. He wanted to wear pink. He had pink dreads for his mom. Now he probably didn't get as fine as Brandon did, but now you have my like my cause my cleats and then the October, a uh, breast cancer awareness mm-hmm. month, mm-hmm. the pink. Mm-hmm. But these are players who have the ability to say, "Hold up, this means something to me." Mm-hmm. And now the NFL, you can't blame them for saying, "Hold on, this is a." This is a dope ass idea. Let's let's see how much we can raise for this. But yeah. well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to leave it out there like that because you you you're right. Everybody right. You know, there there should have been more opportunities, and they there can be more opportunities. I think it was like year three they came back around. We did like a a thirty second spot at commercial, or whatever. Um, you know, and I wasn't looking at it that way. I was looking at how much money you know, uh, the cancer community was generating off of Breast Cancer Awareness Week in the NFL. But then I'm looking at like, damn, there's 36 million Americans impacted by cancer, but there's 120 uh, million Americans affected by mental health. What can the NFL do? How much money can be generated for profit, nonprofit in this community? So I was looking at from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they gave me a little recognition from like putting out a commercial doing that, but it was all about the money. You know, it was about that you how, didn't do we, get. how do we get these resources <laughs> to that's, that's like your point. like your 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 that's summit, crazy. your mental health summit. Like that's, that's what I was looking at. Like, okay, y'all funding all these other places, but you got Charlemagne doing some amazing things in this space. Let's take ten million and put it over here. Let's take ten million. Let's take it to Dak Prescott. Um, but but this is what I would say. So there's opportunities, but if you know when you're dealing with large corporations like that. And and establishments establishments like that, it can take time. So like I I got that. Like when I call the answer and I go in there and it's going to take time, but there's going to be some major deals. Like the biggest uh, uh, partner in the NFL, Cigna, mm-hmm. and they don't activate, mm-hmm. but they got, they trying to focus on mental health. Who else better to do it with? Than you, right? absolutely. So I say that because it's going to happen. And when you building something and you see it, it may take five, 10, 15 years. But when it break through, it's going to break through in a major way. You know, I want to ask you too, Brandon, you, um, you, uh, you had took like a sabbatical, right? Because I saw you yeah. had kind of disappeared and then you came back on, on, on social media. What, what was that about? Be good. Look, look. <laughs> um, so sabbatical, like, look, I, I've invested all of my football money. I made over $100 million, right? So then you got to do after taxes, all of that. I've invested all of my uh, football money into that case study that we talked about earlier at Harvard, content, and commerce. Mm. And so it's going to take time. And, you know, I've made some mistakes. I've learned in real time, but I see it. Everything that I'm doing today is built off of that case study. I'm not doing anything different. 
And so, um, you know, where I've been over the last two years, I've had guys that people come on the platform and we weren't fully aligned. I didn't know how to lead at times. I may have said the wrong thing at times, but I was like, here's the vision. Here's the five-year roadmap. And so getting there has been a little bumpy over the last year or two. And so what I needed to do was, one, look myself in the mirror and say, okay, how are you contributing to this? And two, it's like, all right, bro, fuck the product. Excuse my language. Get the paper right, right, the people right, and then the process. We know how to do content. Mm -hmm. I know how to go viral. That ain't it. It's bigger than that. It's it's bigger than the podcast. We have an opportunity to be the next generation ESPN. Mm -hmm. And so... I think to get there, I had to go on that sabbatical, which I'm still kind of there. Like it's, I'm, I'm almost like a a, 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 a a artist in his last he has delivered one last album, right? Mm. And it's like I'm putting out content because I have a contract, right? And I'm making a lot of money a month to do this. But the reality is, I don't want to put out content right now. I want to get the paper right, the people, and then the process. And so that's where I'm at right now, bro. But like I said, it had to start with me looking myself in the mirror, meditating uh, every day, um, doing yoga every day, you know, still taking care of myself. And a lot of things came up, um, a lot of trauma that I never dealt with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, we're talking about 10 years, like, damn, I'm still carrying that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's where I've been, bro. So I'm, I'm still in that process. But I'm excited about, you know, yep. the vision still. Did, did what happen with I Am Athlete? Because I think I read that you, yeah, put yourself in $12 million debt mm -hmm. with I Am Athlete. No, did. not C, 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 C. You, you see that language you just using? Mm -hmm. But you notice you just, you just quick right there. But that's a big point. In our community, we say $12 million in debt. Or is it $12 million investment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you, got right? you. Right? Got you. Because, you. you know, year three, you do 10.5. In my, that's a, that's a unicorn. Yeah, Amazon was what in the red for how many years? Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. But still worth how much, right? So you got to understand venture. You got to understand the game. So that's what I'm doing and studying and watching the books I'm reading is on venture. It's on the perfect pitch. And so yes, it's twelve million. Twelve million dollar investment. investment. Did, did that trigger anything in you? That did that bring up anything from the the past? Because when I look at I am athlete, I look at it as almost like a, a incubator. Because so talent. much amazing talent mm -hmm. has come through that's there right. and going on. Do you see the pivots? You see Ocho Cinco doing what he's doing. Right. So is that like and that's one of those things. How do you retain talent? Yeah. Right? How do you structure deals? So that's the other challenge. What people don't understand: we are new media. So what does that mean? We're the ones that's going to take. We're on the front line. We're going to take the hits. But when you sit down, like I had, like I got some cool people to always check on me. Like Nori will hit me up every couple of like every month or so and just like, how you doing? You good? Mm -hmm. He hit me up two weeks ago. and He's saying, yo. I just want to let you know you doing you doing good. Keep going. It ain't nothing but some rap shit. Mm -hmm. He said, "Look at Fat Joe. Fat Joe went through the same thing when he was building Terror Squad, mm -hmm. right? So it's like he said the challenge is when you sit down and you are boss to your teammates or your peers. Mm -hmm. So how do I approach a guy and say, okay, here's the deal, but then how do you share an IP? How do you ref share on everything on top, mm -hmm. right? So um, nothing came up when you asked me the question about twelve million. Nothing came up." For me there what came up the biggest thing that came up was that um everything i went through when we talk about my cause my cleats and, and mental health um the 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 biggest thing that came up was like damn 2011 I, that's when i started this 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 journey and after that i start curating my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wasn't authentic i wasn't real why because of what Cam was saying. When I go on the field, now they got they go from one camera or two cameras on me because I am a superstar, the receiver, but now they got four. After a good play, bad play, they want to see my reaction. Mm -hmm. So now I'm living in a box. If I go do this, if I show emotion, they're going to say, oh, he crazy. Mm -hmm. So for 10 years, I've been like trying to curate this, 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 this persona. And I'm like, damn, bro, you, you really, you really, is still affected by what happened in 2011, right? right, right, right? right. All that work you did, mentalization therapy, self-assessment therapy, like, bro, that shit worked. You understood, like, what was, you know, what was going on with, with you mentally and, and how impactful mental health is, but, like, there's still more work to do. And so I start peeling back those layers, and then what also came up was trauma. Like, in two, like I spent three months in an outpatient program in 2011 dealing with these things, but what I didn't deal with was you know, some daddy issues, some mama issues. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm out there teaching these things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, oh shit. Like, no, I gotta go deep. Like I understood like why I viewed the world that way or why I view uh, women that way or why I view, you know, you know, why I may have, you know, not been able to trust. Mm-hmm. So I understood it, but I didn't go deep. And so I just spent like the last six months really going deep, man, and it really changed my life. Right. I want to ask, you know, when you're talking football, sports betting kind of took over, right? Yeah. To a, it just seems like some of the things that they talk about now, the analysts will talk about the sports betting, the parlays over the actual game. Do y'all think sports betting helped or hurt the game? It, it Well, from a player, it helps the game because business, we're all businessmen here. Yep. Right? Like, business is booming. We got to be a part of it, you know? That's why you think the NFL is investing it. They were the number one people uh, walking the halls of Congress and pushing back, pushing back. But it's a, it's a, you got to do it. You got to do it from a business perspective. I um, mean, you got to teach. But from a, a on the field standpoint, Cam, I don't know how you feel about it. But for me, it's like, I ain't, we ain't worrying about that. I'm not worrying about your overs and your unders, no. et cetera, et cetera. But you do have some players that's been suspended. Cause they betting, and okay. they ain't supposed to be betting. Right. But I don't think it affects the product on the field. Okay. We need more minority access in the sports betting space. <laughs> you see ESPN bet, MGM, Prize Picks, Underdog, name them, all Draft of them. DraftKings, all Draft that. DraftKings, all mm-hmm. that. But nobody looks like us. But we probably the number one race that's trying to come up quick. So we talk about business. I'm waiting for some sanctions to be in place for the next sports book to have at least a minority uh, patron in position to do that. Because they use us as influencers, but they don't use us as partners. So, And you got Jay-Z. Uh Fighting for, for the that. casino. For the casino. Yeah, yeah. I hope he gets it. Hopefully, Hopefully he gets it. Season's Times Palace. Square, yeah. Times Square. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's needed, bro. Like, Caesars. I think I think for us, we don't have enough enough of us in position to really <laughs> empower, what? bro. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing, man. <laughs> what, what just happened? He be on everything. He be on everything. Nothing, man. Brandon yeah. crazy. <laughs> See, you just like them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to answer. No, I'll, tell, I'll, tell I, after the, I'll tell you after the interview. Yeah, after the interview. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, that no, that's real shit. Like I just feel like we need to have more access, bro. If we got more access, we already mm-hmm. are are naturally trendsetters, mm-hmm. and just being in the in in the trend of business. That's why Jay Z is so impactful. Absolutely, because we're not used to somebody looking like us, speaking for us, mm-hmm. and just empowering us in such a authentic way right and just imagine if we had 20 of him now that changed the narratives in the hood to be like bro i ain't just trying to you know drill on something mm-hmm. you know i'm trying to really like pick up a skill on something mm-hmm. you dig what i'm saying and, and really take it to the next level can well, what are your thoughts cam on the state of black quarterbacks right now in the nfl i think We're, this year it was like some record it was like what 14 starting quarterbacks yeah, we the majority quarters. now the, the real thing is when I first came into the league, it was it was Donovan McNabb. He was headed out. Michael Vick headed out. And that was it. Now, being a white quarterback is the minority now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being an a pocket quarterback is the minority now. You feel me? So I love the state of, of where it's at right now, and it's pushed by the Lamar Jacksons of the world, the mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes of the world, these extremely uh, savvy skill sets that this game has really never seen, mm-hmm. and it's praised now. So. I always felt like there was a racial stereotypical component to being a black quarterback where they felt like y'all weren't smart enough yeah. to play the position. There's, yeah. I mean, that's it's it, it's it's in... It's in everything, not just in sports. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's in everything. Like diversity and inclusion, it don't matter what the commodity is. The right hire, the right person should get this position. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just because you run fast and you just so happen to play the quarterback position, you shouldn't have to change your position. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we had a lot of questions about the Lamar Jackson when he got drafted. Mm -hmm. Joe mm -hmm. Flacco was there. It's like, is he going to play receiver? That's why he didn't want to run the 40. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, bro, I don't want to do that because I know what y'all trying to trying to do. And That's crazy. They try to change your position. Mm -hmm. Just because yeah. you like, come yeah. on, bro. Corner, wide receiver, all these black quarterbacks. Oh, wow. You're an athlete. You're an athlete. You're That's going to use you over here. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's to your point, you know, mine, and it's backed up in numbers as well. Some of the smartest guys, or they think is the smartest guys on the field, are uh, the backup quarterbacks. A mm -hmm. lot of our head former players that become head coaches are backup quarterbacks. And when you look at the numbers, how many black quarterbacks are backup quarterbacks? Now, that's important because we talk about evolution, evolving, the transition. So a, a white quarterback can be in the NFL for 10, 15 years, never throw a touchdown, but they're a backup quarterback. How many black quarterbacks do they get an opportunity? So to that person that says, who does Cam Newton think he is by coming out with a list, I'm telling you, I get. I said I would be a backup to these people. So, knowing that most backup quarterbacks that don't look like me, mm -hmm. nobody. I mean, being in a quarterback room, you know, it was just certain things that it wasn't awkward. It was just like, as a starter, you set the tempo of the room. But you know, when you can't, you can't talk about certain things because mm -hmm. it's like y'all ain't gonna be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. What I seen in 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 Baltimore this year, they had a black coach, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and the backups were black. It mm -hmm. was like, damn, I wanted to be in that room, mm -hmm. see what mm -hmm. that's like. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I never had that. You know, uh, one of my most exciting times was probably around that 2014, 15, 16 season where I had Joe Webb, uh, Birmingham, uh, and then Derek Anderson. Where he really was like a a hippie damn near, mm -hmm. you know, cause he was from Oregon and he just didn't, he was naive to a lot of things, but he was, he knew his stuff and he was relatable. He knew, he knew how to speak my language when I was frustrated, when I was excited. He was that, all right, all right, come on kiddo, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on man, come on, fix your body language, like that type of thing too. And then, you know, Joe being, man, come on man, like, <laughs> fuck that shit, man. Like, like, <laughs> you know, that, that's who he was and I needed that balance that contrast mm -hmm. to be able to be the best version of myself, but yeah. Both of y'all brilliant brothers, man. When Absolutely. did y'all say to yourselves, we're gonna defy the stereotype of the, the dumb jock? I don't know, I always looked up to mm -hmm. the uh, the people who had money. Mm -hmm. And I said it on Earn Your Leisure, I was like, bro, I, I'm, I don't really read as many books as I should, but I tap into documentaries mm -hmm. heavy. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I receive my kind of content. And the documentaries that I love the most are Drug Kingpins, because they're the most well-versed businessmen on uh, this earth. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> because they're not just fighting for they, their budgets, they're fighting for their lives. Mm -hmm. One wrong move can cost you your freedom or cost you your life. Mm -hmm. And that's how smart you have to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not promoting violence mm -hmm. by no means, but I'm just saying like, just to be able to think like that was the same bandwidth that Pablo Escobar had. You don't run no empire like that without having a little Jeff Bezos in you with the little Steve Jobs in you and having to know everything about your business, structuring how much we did this and there. And it's, it's extremely entertaining to me. And when I look at business, I've always was enamored by the, the owner. How does he move? How does he dress? How does he carry himself? How does people respect him? Mm -hmm. uh, how does he take on the room? How does he treat the people that's at his level or under his level? And I tried to mimic that into the businessman that I am today. What gave both of y'all brothers oh, the business? Brandon, what about you? I never uh, thought about the stigma, played into the stigma, and you could say it's selfish, but, and that may be true for a lot of us, like, you know, you we grow up surviving, not thriving, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, yo, I wanna play in the NFL, I knew that early, and you know, when you get older, you start understanding, oh, we really ain't got what I thought we have. And so now you wanna take care of your mom, you wanna take care of your people. That's why early when you asked the question as far as championships and impact, for me, it was nothing, it was the money. Like, I, I'm gonna go out there and do my thing, I wanna be the best, 
but I'm taking money over everything because I got a mom and a sister on Chandler Road, you know, in Atlanta that ain't got nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're in a eight, they're in a motel eight, you know, my senior year. And so it was coming from a selfish standpoint, but almost selfless because I really wanted to take care of my people, right? But I loved the game. But then when I ended up at uh, you know, McLean in that outpatient program, that's when I understood my purpose. And that's when it became bigger than me for the very first time. And that's when I start studying and reading a lot, start reading tons of, like, I mean, I got a whole library and I read all the time. And that's when I put that case study in place. And I just been purpose driven since then. And that's been part of the challenge as well. It's like when you hear, sometimes you don't see people, you don't, you're not relatable, you know, you're not built in those relationships, right? Cause it's just purposeful. I'm here. If mm-hmm. y'all ain't on this here, it's mom too. Mom, mm-hmm. you ain't it. We, mom, mom, you going to Betty? She went to Betty Ford. You, you want that house? Yeah, it's going to Betty Ford. Now she's seven years sober, right? But me and mom was fighting mm-hmm. for four or five years. Four or five years, mom was fighting. Shout out to Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Um, it was because of you. My mom got help. Really? really? Yeah. What, what she, she called me and I was fighting from I was fighting my mom for a couple of years. I'm like, Mom, you need help. You need help. Like, look at this pamphlet. I think you're alcoholic. I think you're alcoholic. And she went through a lot. And um, I never forget riding down 172nd in Miami on date night. My mom called me crying. She said, Baby, I just watched Mary J's story and I think that's me. Wow. wow. And I'm gonna finally go get the help you need. I need. And then boom, she goes. We set her up at Betty Ford three months later. So six, seven years sober. Wow. Seven years sober. Seven years. I'm sorry, mom. I, if I missed a year. So that's so the power of content, right? Yeah, absolutely. There. That, yeah. that, that, to what you were saying, that just makes you want to continue to make intentional, purpose-driven content. Yes. That somebody's documentary, Mary mm-hmm. J's documentary, could influence and inspire somebody to go get help. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Love Mary. Never met her. I, I, I love for to, Mary to meet my mom. Now salute to Mary. I was going to ask, where did the business do. mind come from? You talk about all this business. Where did that come from? You hear a lot of times people go to all these different leagues, right? And they just focus on the game. Mm-hmm. And then by the time it's time to get out, they realize that what they thought they had, they no longer have, right? Mm-hmm. Due to agents, due to taxes, due to friends, family, this, that, the other. When did y'all get the mind where it's like, I'm going to be different? Because uh, a lot of times we're not taught. Yeah. It's, it's simple. Uh, it's in the book of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. It's a title that says, what's your business? Right? And you ask a person, they say, oh, I'm a teacher. Yeah, but you own your own school? It's like, no, 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 what's your business? Like, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, I'm an athlete. Yeah, so you own a team? It's like, no. So when you start having this understanding, like, what's my business? That forces you to say, what can I call my own? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm building these platforms. I'm big, giving these ideas, my cause, my cleats, breast care, the cancer awareness and, and for other people, but it's not me. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling Brandon to this day, like, bro, you got all these ideas, bro, but you ain't got nothing to show for it. So oh, how, how oh. no, no, I'm, I'm saying that, <laughs> let me let me get to the point. Like, How do we make sure that we follow through, that we do have something to show for, right? Not to say that it, it, he ain't got nothing, you know, but it's just like, you you should have more. If we're being honest, mm-hmm. so this business side kind of came where it's it's shunned when you're playing because you're not focused. You put into like I had a, a person tell me you can paid enough where you don't need to go on these things. I said no bullshit. <laughs> Hell no, nah. you can't. You don't get the right to tell me what I'm making enough to not get advertising dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's like you. It's 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 clear as day. But I don't think a lot of athletes are aware, nor that's 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 the lazy side. But the reality, too, a lot of them really don't have time to really focus in and hone in. So now whether the Atlanta Falcons call me or not, I have to really consider it's like, yo, I'm doing so much stuff to set up for the next, the next, and the next mm-hmm. that I, I would be distracted if I was there. You know what I'm saying? But that business side has always came. Like, well, y'all in Atlanta, bro, come to come to fellowship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you say a hat, like this is my company. This is not somebody else. Like go get a hat. You know, the style is, you know, something that I've always been working on, so many different things. I show myself with my production company, Iconic Saga. No, I don't need ESPN to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think with all these four lows these last couple of years, 
ESPN, the the Tom Warner, the the Paramounts, they've they've understood like, oh, we can't keep hiring all these people. Like we got to do cuts because people are not consuming the content the same way that they used to. Mm-hmm. So, Brandon, I think for me, <clears throat> the first couple years was rough, you know, um, and then you know I always knew like I had it, um, the game the personality, all of that. You know, I would just sit there and watch, like, Peyton Manning, his press conference after Sunday night football, see his hand gestures and talking. And, you know, I was always studying. I was like, damn, I could do that. And and so, but I the first couple of years was rough. And then I realized, like, damn, bro, you're not a brand. And a lot of athletes, what we do is we go out there and we're like, yo, we Nike pay me this, Gatorade pay me that. We're a brand. We're trying to make money off our name, image, likeness. I was like, well, that doesn't, that's not there for me anymore. I'm business. And so I started operating that way, hiring my own teams, building out, you know, teams and taking these ideas and uh, trying to bring them to life, bringing them to life. Um, And so, yeah, I just put my head down, really started reading. And a book that really changed my life was uh, Good to Great. And so Jim Collins, all his business imprints, I read all of them. Like, I was hooked. That was my first business book. Mm -hmm. Probably damn near my first book I ever read, and it was my fifth year in the NFL, you know? And so, um, and and the reason why I said that, when you said, what do you have to show for it? You know, like, I read everything. Like, even, like, you watch a Netflix documentary. It takes 10, 15 years sometimes, you know? Uh, Mm -hmm. Peloton, seven years. This, This CEO, he was about to commit suicide. And then all of a sudden, boom, it pops cool, through. Yeah. So, you know, it just takes time. Um, but I feel like our breakthrough was in the pandemic. Like, we were we were ready. Everything I wanted happened in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Boom. Now I have two brands that are nationally known and then one that is globally known when it comes to athletes because they tap into the platform. So premier athletes around the world are watching. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm in this space when you ask me, like, yo, why are you going to sabbatical? <clears throat> because I'm like, I fucking got it. And now it's like, all right, what do I do next? My next moves got to be my best moves. That's right. Right? Mm-hmm. So. And you a service. I mean, Project 375, I mean, you've been, you know, that's you was on the front lines of the mental health conversation yeah. early long, 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 yeah. long, long, long time ago. Yeah. I'm done with Project 375. I'm done with nonprofit. Okay. For profit. That's where House of Athlete comes in at. Like, that's a $10 billion brand. And my vision wasn't necessarily nonprofit. It was more so just the work. And it's like, I, you know, I got had this vision in 2015, I said, damn, you know, in 15 years, we're going to donate $400 million to the mental health community. So I got 300 and 390 to go, no, you know? But, but and so I said that I was going to do that through business. Yeah, but don't do that, though, because nonprofit gives you a way to, to shelter that so you not just sure. get tax benefits. No, for sure. Like, no, it's still, like, the, the entity's still there, and, and we take the benefits, but instead of me taking, it's like yeah. time, right? But it's people so if I'm putting, like, 50% of my time is going into nonprofit, mm-hmm. and now that nonprofit is generating, you know, let's say two, $2.5 million a year, right? $2.5 million a year. Like, we're doing these ping pong tournaments, golf tournaments, these different galas, and we're bringing in two, 300000 a pop, but then you got the overhead. It's like, this is a waste of my time. So then I can go focus on business and boom, you know, I can generate more revenue. And that's why I said, like, when I did that, when I stopped playing ball and I realized that what I realized I was when in my transition, 2018, 19, I'm laying there on my gym floor, the the same gym that you guys came to. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, this is mental health. Like you're talking about wellness. And so I said, I ain't going to put my time in here. I'm going to put my time there. At the time, we was doing eleven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars a month. And I put that plan in place and within three months. And I was like, if I hit, if I see a community being built and I hit 60,000 recurring monthly, I'm going all in. So that's how we got to the 12. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two metrics that I was looking at. Mm-hmm. Community. And the way I was gauging the, the community was how many people lead the, the workout, this class, and then they go to a juice bar and they sit there and hang out. They like it. Mm-hmm. Right. This the next Peloton, the next Soul Cycle, et cetera, et cetera. Within month three, it went from $12,000 a month to 65,000, I said, fucking, I got it. Here we go, boom. And so then, you know, pandemic hit, things slowed down, and then right there, year three, 10.5, 4.5 on a, a brick and mortar side, 5.5 on the media side. And now, but it's it, everything, every dollar in, 
you know, it's, it's going right back out. Right, like, right. I was, you know, you're moving fast. It's like, shit, when we go in and do a deal with NASCAR and we got to take 10 people, that's coming out of my pocket. It, like Cam said, Iconic Saga check. That was coming out Brandon Marshall entity, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 so right. it was because we wasn't, we wasn't generating any revenue then. And it's like, boom, 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 But boom. a lot of those things, too, like, you don't understand your business. And I think you have to acknowledge that, too, for people who are listening. It's like when you get these brand deals, even though it says Cam Newton, I have to understand like, hey, I'm not paying Cam Newton. I haven't paid Cam Newton through Iconic Saga yet. And I've had Iconic Saga for two, like since 2016. Mm -hmm. Like we need better understanding of the business structure and what really is. It's like, no, y'all using my name. Like this is, it's still a talent. But knowing like, hold on, I need to get the best equipment. You know, I, I need enhancements around, you know, the 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 set. Like I want chairs like this now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that's an iconic saga expense. Mm -hmm. So once you understand that, like that's where okay, you standing on business. You feel what I'm saying? So. I, I got two more questions for y'all. One is a, a a broad question just about the NFL, and one for you, Cam. But start with the NFL question. Why do y'all think C.J. Shroud's thanking Jesus was edited out edited out of his his post game speech? Mm. Like if the league you know, uh, like not accepting of religion. I, I never, I've always seen people thank God. So why do you think that happened? Yeah, I think that was NBC too. Right? Oh, NBC, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It was NBC. I believe so. I mean, yeah, I, I think it, 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 you know, look, now we, we're in a time where um, we're so divided, right? And so you think about, you know, why we're divided, the politics, religion, you know, and uh, in different communities, their points of views. And so when you think about business, they don't want they don't want that. They just want mm -hmm. football. And so I think it's wrong. Uh, it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. But that's the answer. They're looking at business and a division like they want this audience that's coming here just mm -hmm. for ball. Um, and then you go back to the pandemic 2020. Right. Like 2020 showed us, you know, people were tired of talking politics. Remember that conversation, mm -hmm. tired of talking politics, and that's where the conversation, athletes, shut up, do this, we just come here for ball. So shut up and dribble. Yeah. That's right. So now mm -hmm. they sit in here and they're like, well, let's take all that other stuff out the game. We got through it already. We had in racism in the end zone, and some teams still have some, some of those things. But the reality is these organizations is trying to get rid of that. What you think, Cam? Hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. NBC, hold their ass accountable. They're going to do it to – if C.J. Stroud would have said something controversial – they would have been running that, looping it, running mm, that, all day. looping it. Like a same, I'll give you another one. How do we mistake who Burn, uh, Burner Boy is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we reported that this yeah. morning. You're right. It happens Which all the time. Which is crazy. Mind you, he won a Grammy last, what, two years ago? Come on now. Hold these motherfuckers accountable. That's the only reason, because this is this is the, the unfair treatment. You'll sit up there and you'll hold an athlete accountable because of his performance. You'll hold a, a athlete accountable or entertainers because they're humans. Mm -hmm. But what do we say to these networks when they make their mistakes? We just overlook, oh, no, it's okay, cool. No, I'm coming for accountability on everybody, from the reporters to the players to the networks. Because that, that, that shit ain't right. Shit, if I make a motherfucking take and I say these are game, like, oh, shit, bro. <laughs> Who the hell are you? You you was trash as a player. Okay, cool. But if I were to go back and I look at DJ Envy's personal life mm -hmm. and I really put a microscope to it and I really identify who Charlemagne the guy really is, the kid from South Carolina, and I really start asking those people, mm -hmm. but that'd be me being malicious. But you're going to do that when I make a mistake. Ain't this the same boy that got all these kids? Why mm -hmm. he got all these kids? But if I start naming all the people who also got multiple kids, but y'all didn't know that though, too. So y'all gonna hold me accountable to some of that different rules for different people. No, hold everybody accountable. That's what the new norm of 2024 should be. And if you call cap on me, show the receipts. Shit, <laughs> your boy Debo. Cam, stop calling me. The motherfucker, I ain't calling you. <laughs> now he realized like somebody was playing with you. Can't just sit up there and do that goofy ass. <laughs> so, so you know, <laughs> are you on another situation? <laughs> so he never, you never was calling. <laughs> no, somebody was playing on his phone. That's no. crazy, man. And, and, and these little white kids, they came out and said that. 
But he goes online and say like, yo, bro, Cam, stop calling me. You just wanted me on your podcast a couple weeks ago. I'm like, bro, that wasn't me. Oh, that's but crazy. that's cool. But he tried to stand on business. But as we find out, and I'm a fan, still a fan of Debo. Like, bro, like, how can I hate what you do? Like, it was a mistake. But hey, t- you thought you got me. You didn't. Like, bro, I'm where we have to start highlighting authentic people. Bro, I'm real, bro. I go anywhere, anywhere, and I'm good because I respect everybody. Mm hmm. Can't sit up here. What you gonna have to say? You dress goofy. Like, hell nah, bro. Don't talk about me and my kids because you can't tell, have one of my kids tell me I'm not the best father. Mm-hmm. I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I have, I love my kids. I want more kids. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't, don't make that plight mm-hmm. with that situation because I'm extremely intentional. I give opportunities to people. Right, I'm looking at a guy right now, Amar. I will remember when he wore this baggy ass suit in 2016, <laughs> and now he, on, no, like, wait, shit, no, I, I, I'm <laughs> saying that. Show, no, 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 no check this out. Nuts, <laughs> check this out, though. <laughs> but I also, we were walking, we were walking on Fifth Avenue yesterday, mm-hmm. and I sit up here and I told him, I said, "Bro, I'm proud of you, dog. I see how you carry yourself now. Like, bro, you got to do better." because people are reporting to you and you have to also carry yourself how I carry myself. The level of accountability has to be from top down, not bottom up. And this is a a dear friend, or he doesn't work for me, we work as partners. Mm -hmm. Cause he is is owed a lot of the creation. Everybody right here, Mm -hmm. the same thing. So I'm all about opportunities. Mm And I know if I get that opportunity that a lot of people have had, I know what I'll do with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the accountability that has to be rendered in this media space. Because if you were to say something, misinformed information, oh, damn, Brandon Marshall in debt 12 million. No, hold on, stop. You know how many people are listening to this shit? They gonna think Brandon Marshall really in debt $12 $12 million? No, invested, I invested, invested, invested $12, right, million. $12 right. million. So we owe a due diligence to the content that we give out that is as authentic to the truth. And if it's not the truth or if it's fucked up, we got to highlight that. Hold on. No, that's what Cat Williams was trying to do. And that's what he did. He just gave receipts. Collecting information for years, he said. I was just been collecting information for years. You and f- you, you feel like that was the right thing to do, Cat Williams? I mean, I can never tell somebody not to live their truth, but I guess my issue is the same thing that Cam just said, and I said this on air. When you're talking about power and control in a business, if all you're calling out is black people, mm-hmm. then you're not really calling nobody out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, you can't talk about power and control in Hollywood and not talk about these white executives. Mm-hmm. But I think too, what right. what what. Right. The missed thing too is that he was retaliating from the past guests that had came and spoke on something. He was like, no, that's not true. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them he had already he had that rhetoric for Kevin a long, long yeah. time ago. <laughs> but but that's the thing. Like we 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 missed that. It's mm-hmm. like, hold up. These guests were there before. And it's still subjective to who you gonna believe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. But I look at it like this: I'm like, hold on. I, I I text Kristen Myers, right? And I told her, I said, God damn, Club Shay Shay, boy, they putting pressure on Funky Friday, and I love it. I'm not hating on them. <laughs> Why I do love... we feel like that? Though? I don't feel like no, that. it's a competitive drive. It's not. Okay. I'm, it's not hating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bringing out the best version of me because I'm seeing his guest list. Country Wayne did numbers. Cat mm-hmm. Williams set. Pre- I mean, we started off the year on fire. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's gonna be a good year. Mm-hmm. And he's in that space where I'm saying I respect Shannon Sharp enough. A one of us type of guy played in the NFL has morphed into a better. We just seen uh, a CBS uh, Nate Burleson mm-hmm. evolve Salute and just Nate. just yeah. getting better. We see Mike mm-hmm. Shanahan, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Ma- Michael Strahan. Michael, Michael, I'm sorry. Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan. Like these people are evolving and that's no different than what I'm doing right now. I'm evolving into a new version of who Cam Newton really is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I want to always stand on that authenticity where it's like, hold on, where, what happened to the Cam? Where it's like, no, oh. like, no. Nah. This Cam right here, bro, I feel liberated. I can't wait to use my platform to impact 
empower, and entertain. People. Well, are you are you coming out with a book on how to be the kind of man that makes a woman want to submit? Ooh, I <laughs> that like makes that. a woman want to be submissive. Nah. I need to be coming out with a book that 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 tell we need men to start being men. That might be that because be I reason. think I think that's the thing too. That that submissive line mm-hmm. I should have added. Also, we need to be we need men to be men. Because then I will ask DJ Indy, mm-hmm. how were you able to sustain your marriage for so many years? Mm. We don't talk about that. It's true. You know, mm-hmm. and and for a real real life, book right there. Love. See the book right yeah, there? Yeah, right there. Right. <laughs> but married 22 years, ups, downs, lefts, right? Yes. But, but we're able to, you know, to talk about it. And- yeah, so so when I'm having these conversations and I'm, and I'm speaking, I've never been married. So somebody would say, how the hell you get to talk about marriage? If you ain't never been married, you got relationships. But yeah. then I would say this: How does Stephen A. Smith talk about the NBA if he ain't yeah, never been in the that. NBA? Right. I've I've had certain situations though that had garnered a lot of attention by me saying, you know, an alpha male. Mm-hmm. But a real man, I've seen my father do this. He knew when to allow the woman to lead. Mm-hmm. We need men to start taking accountability and saying, like, bro, you can't just keep having these fatherless children, bro. Mm-hmm. But we highlight him in music. We highlight him in, you know, different aspects. It's like, okay, he a great this or great that. That's what Charleston White did. Just still accountability, you know. And he shunned Dion. I'm like, but did Dion do anything different if you was in his position? Would you not try to put your son on? Mm-hmm. So you can't you can't be hypocritical. To that, and it's not like it's not like his son not a dog. Exactly, right. you know what I'm saying. And he's putting his whole family, like the 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 well off media, that's his son. Mm-hmm. Like we put, it's no different. Oh, I give you one even better. Mm-hmm. Why are we not talking about Sunday Night Football? Uh, Chris Collinsworth. You know who does the on field an, uh, analyst? Mm-mm. His son. Mm. With with Coach and uh, uh, Harrison. Yeah. It's his son. Mm-hmm. But we don't talk about that. Are you talking about Chris Sims? Chris, no. Oh. Collins, uh, Collinsworth, okay, his son. Book. Yeah. Right? How do we hold How do we hold the, the Lonzo balls and the Lamar balls to a standard when we seen what Arch, Archie Manning did for his son? Well, you're talking about, well, basically you talk about nepotism, and that's like Bill Belichick's son, to both of his sons, defensive coordinator and also safeties oh, coach, yeah. Andy Reid, for his son, like, when they on. went to the Super Bowl, driving drunk, whatever, but his son uh, was on the coaching staff, but that's... Accountability. Get the coach down in Jacksonville, he brings his son in as a tight end, he didn't make the team, but he gave him a spot. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at yeah. that, but tried but to give him a spot. It's accountability, like, mm-hmm. let's start calling it what we calling it yeah, and yeah, stop yeah. having these hold on hold on hold on shut up no cam don't say that let's keep talking about Deion sanders mm-hmm. and it's not a black and white thing it's more of like a real authentic thing and when you i owe a service to the viewer i owe a service to my community of people my kind as i would like to say it mm-hmm. like they expect the honesty but now i have to learn from the larry kings I have to learn from the uh, Oprah Winfrey's. I have to learn from the Shannon Sharps. I have to learn from, you know, everybody that has a night show, the Jay Leno's of the mm-hmm. world, and going back on and, and, and seeing how they were able to Charlemagne the guys to ask these tough questions very savvy. And that's pretty much what it comes down to, being a student of the game and holding people accountable. Y'all brothers are doing a great yeah, job. I, I can sit here and talk to y'all all day, man. That's right. Make, make sure you check. The I Am Iconic tour and the I Am Athlete Funky, Funky Friday, Friday. it's a tour? Right. Yeah, so we did a couple cities. Okay. Um, now we feel like, it's like almost like a, a comedian of perfecting their material. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have this idea of creating a live experience. And so we were in Atlanta, Chicago, mm-hmm. um, and we feel really good about it. And now it's time to what, stand on business? Stand on business, package it. Doesn't make sense, but that doesn't negate the fact that we still got our individually owned IPs. The mm-hmm. Iconic Saga is creates its original content, the fourth and one sports show, Funky Friday. You have H3 Productions mm-hmm. that we know, I Am Athlete, Paper Route, things like that. And um, yeah, it's just gonna keep getting better and better. We'll be at you know Super Bowl as well, uh, just collecting data 
Uh, I'll be on Radio Row at fourth and one. I hope I can see Dak. I mm-hmm. hope I can see he Kimberly won't, Martin. Won't I hope you. I can see Jason McIntyre. I hope I can see Brock Parity. I hope I can see, you know, uh, Tua Tonga Valoa. Because unlike a lot of people who just throw a grenade and leave, <laughs> shit, I'm I'm pulling up with a knife. Mm-hmm. That means I got to be real close to you. Mm-hmm. It's the best. Yeah, come on. I'd rather have a conversation with come you. Come on. That's why, so, that's why a lot of people in this space I don't respect because you're too busy talking about folks. Yeah. Talk to them. Yeah. Had a conversation yeah. with them. That. Mm-hmm. That. Well, we appreciate you brothers for joining us. Yes, sir. And y'all guys are invited anytime you know that. So if you in town, pull on up. Yeah. yeah even just, just come on up. No, no, no. See, I'm going to tell you like I told, you know, uh, Brandon, um, I ain't going to keep doing freebies. I ain't mad at you. But, you know, scratch my back, <laughs> I scratch your back. I ain't mad at you. The next next time, you got to come on our podcast. I'll be no there. Problem. That's say, say less. You see what I'm no saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, 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 and we can, look, I'm not I'm not saying that to say y'all got to pay me. What I am saying, hey, just return the favor. Say less. Got, I'm there. It. And hopefully when we when we get our co-host, whenever that happens, you know, we'll all come together. Hold on. What I, happened? <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation you had. Hold with on. <laughs> Hold on. Mm-hmm. What happened? Before mm-hmm. we get out of here, the people the people I want to know. With what? With uh, Jess Hilarious. Oh, I loved y'all conversation on... Um, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. That, no, was, no, no. Right. that was, was a fantastic. dope conversation. Like, y'all, yeah, that was an amazing was conversation. What happened to Jess Hilarious on The Breakfast Club? Yo, Cam Newton and Brandon, Brandon Marshall, Marshall, thank Marshall, y'all for Cam joining Newton, us. Man. We appreciate, we appreciate them appreciate so much. You, man. It's The Is Breakfast Club. Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.